Hello Year 6, welcome to your literacy video for Friday. Well done yesterday, especially with the work on similes and personification. I can tell that you really listened to my video yesterday, which is brilliant, so well done. Um, we're moving on today, carrying on in the same book with the train on the front if you are if you have this one. If not, I'll go over the one with the monkey on after this one. So your next text then is pages 14 and 15 and we're continuing with answering questions on a text. Okay, so your next text then is called Pompeii. Okay, so it says Pompeii was an ancient Roman city built on the slopes of a volcano called Mount Vesuvius. In the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius suddenly erupted. The debris from the volcano destroyed Pompeii and buried the city under tons of ash. This text is full of information about Pompeii. Okay, so you just want to read through that text and you will see that it's split into three different sections and you've got some subheadings to help you. Let's have a look at the text together. Now I've gone through this text again and I have found, highlighted all of the words that I think might be unfamiliar to you or you might not recognise. And then remember, I'll go through some, but then if you're not sure of any others, you can go on dictionary.com and find the definition to help you. So let's have a look at this first section together then. So it's called a typical Roman city. Okay, so it says, in the first century AD, Pompeii was a thriving port city. It had a population of between 10,000 and 20,000 people, and it was a popular holiday destination for people who lived in Rome. So here I've highlighted thriving. That means it's very busy, lots of people go there. Okay, and then I've also highlighted population, and that's how many people live there. Not the people going on holiday, the people that live in Rome. Sorry, Pompeii. Um, like other Roman cities, Pompeii had a central square known as a forum, where markets were held and the city's business was conducted. The city also had temples to Roman gods, including Jupiter and Apollo, theatres where plays and concerts were held, and a huge amphitheatre where people went to see sports and other entertainments such as gladiator games and chariot races. An aqueduct brought fresh water into the city, supplying public fountains and baths. Some wealthy citizens even had running water in their homes. Okay, so I've highlighted another couple of words. I've just noticed that I've missed one that I could have highlighted, of conducted. So it's where the city's business was conducted. So that means carried out. That's where it was done. That's where the business was done. Okay, the, uh, I've highlighted amphitheatre, so, but if you read on, it actually does tell you what an amphitheatre is, and it's where people went to see sports and other entertainments, so it's like a stadium almost. Um, an aqueduct then is something that brings fresh water into the city, um, and wealthy citizens then, wealthy means rich, so lots of money, citizens are people that live there. Okay, so... That's going over those the words in there that I think you might struggle with. In the rest of the text then, if you come across a word that you're unsure of, make sure you read around it to try and figure out what it means, or if not, go on to dictionary.com and see if you can figure it out. Okay, let's have a look at some of the questions together then. So question one says, in your own words, explain the purpose of an aqueduct. Now I know we've just read about an aqueduct here. So it tells you what an aqueduct is here, but remember, it's asking you to write it in your own words. So it's asking you not to copy it. So have a read of it, think about what an aqueduct does, what is it for, and then you should be able to answer that question. Question two then says, use the information in the text to identify two similarities between life in a Roman city and what you know about life in Britain today. Now remember, a similarity is when two things are the same or nearly the same. Okay, so have a look in this first paragraph in this section still 
and see if you can find two things that are the same or nearly the same about when they lived and when and when we live now so for example it says people went to see sports and other entertainments people go and watch sport now don't they in a stadium so that's quite similar it's not an amphitheatre but it's similar okay so it's not exactly the same so that's one similarity um, you have a look and see if you can find another one number three then it says how do we know about what happened in the days before Mount Vesuvius erupted now that's going to be in our next section I think in the disaster strike section and let me zoom out a little tiny bit so you can see it okay so it's going to be in this bit if you find the key words of eruption of Vesuvius so that's when it erupted have a look what it says just before that it's in the first two lines so there's your clue number four says how did the people of Pompeii feel about the earthquakes that happened before 20, between 20th and 24th of August 79 AD why did they feel like this okay so we're going to have to go and find where it says about that and then it'll give us a little bit more of information so I can see straight away that 24th of August 79 AD and 20th of August is here so it's going to be in this section in this disaster strike section so if you have a look um, around line 17 that will tell you how people felt but this is a two mark question it's a two part question so you might want to say um, the people felt sad that's not the answer I've just made that up the people felt sad but then you've got to say why they felt like that so there is a reason in there around line 17 that will help you with that okay number five then says why is Pompeii important for our understanding of daily life in the Roman Empire now this one is a two mark question and I want to go over this one with you because I keep saying in feedback that we need to use evidence to support our answer so I'm going to go over that with you today because I've noticed it's something that quite a few of us have got in common that we need to go over okay so we're going to have a look at this text together I'm going to ask a question we're going to answer it together and then I've got another little text for you to have a go at by yourself okay one second let me just make sure we can see it all okay so John sprinted to the door. He clutched the cold, rigid door handle and dared to wait for a moment. He listened. All he could hear was the pounding of his own heart. Were they still following him? So my question for this one then is how is John feeling? Okay, so let's have a look. Because it doesn't say anywhere John felt. We're going to have to use clues from the text to help us. So let's have a look what we can use so one second let's get a highlighter ready so um all he could hear was the pounding of his own heart so if his heart is pounding how do you think he's feeling he sprinted okay he clutched the cold cold door handle and dared to wait for a moment so how do we think he's feeling okay, i think he's feeling pretty scared okay but that would only get me one mark okay so your answer needs to be something like i think john is scared because in the text it says all he could hear was the pounding of his own heart so i've used a bit of evidence there to back up why i think he's scared okay right i want you to have a look at the next one Okay, so the next one then says, stumbling blindly into the darkness, he ran on. He was in a corridor now. He hadn't got time to search for a light switch. A tiny ray of light from a window up ahead was providing just enough light to assist his escape. His breath was coming in desperate grasps now, partly from fatigue, partly from anxiety. He had to find a way out now. Okay, so my question then for you on this text is, is John in a rush? Explain your answer. So you've got to use evidence from the text to show whether you think he's in a rush or not. So I'll move out of the way so that you can pause your video and have a good look at the text. Have a, have a go at answering the question. 
Okay, when you have had a go, come back and play the video and we will go through it together and then you can see if you were right. Okay, so hopefully you've all had a go on a piece of paper. So, if we're asking, is John in a rush? We need to find out yes or no first. So let's have a look. Okay, so he ran. So if you're running, you're probably in a rush. He was in a corridor now. He hadn't got time. So he hasn't, if he hasn't got time, then he must be in a rush. Um, let's have a look. So he's out of breath. His breath was coming in desperate gas. So even though he's out of breath, he's still running. Okay, and then he had to find a way out now. So the answer is going to be yes, isn't it? He does, he is definitely in a rush. Okay, but again, that would only get us one mark. So you should have written something like, yes, John is in a rush. And I know this because in the text it says, um, he hadn't got time to search for a light switch. Or, I know this because in the text it says, he ran. Okay, so you need to use something from the text that backs up your answer that shows you know why he was in a rush. Okay, so you should now hopefully be able to apply that to page, uh, sorry, to question five in your text for today. So let's just go over your question again. It says, why is Pompeii important for our understanding of daily life in the Roman Empire? Okay, so you need to go and find where it says it and then use a bit of evidence from that text. So you could say, uh, Pompeii is important for our understanding of daily life in the Roman Empire because in the text it says, and then you find it. Okay? The last one then says, do you find the subheadings in this text helpful? Explain your answer. Now this is, there's no right or wrong answer for this one, much like all the other last questions. Um, it's up to you whether you think yes or no. Um, so the subheadings, remember, are these lists, are the it's in orange so like disaster strikes and a lost city rediscovered so do you think they help the reader yes or no just make sure you explain your answer so if you think yes say yes i think they are helpful because dot 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 okay so that's your reading for today if you have the monkey book then your next text is pages 16 and 17 and you have got it over two pages today so you've got a bit of a challenge okay so yours is called our solar system so you've got some pictures of the different planets and then you've got a little bit of information in the middle about each one okay so you have a good good read through that then and then i'm going to go through question one with you and remind you of the technique that we have used in school for ordering questions. So I'll just get your, your text up. Okay, so here then. So I've got your text here. So if you remember in school, we use the star technique, don't we, to find the answers to our uh, sorry, to find them all in the text and then we put them in order. So you've got to remember to star them all first and then put your numbers in your boxes. So it says write the number one, two, three, four, or five next to each planet to put them in the correct order from the sun. Okay, so let's go and find each planet and put a star next to them and then we'll clearly be able to see which order they go in. So Uranus is the first one. So Uranus is all the way down here. So I'm going to put a star next to Uranus. The next one is Neptune. So Neptune is oh right at the bottom underneath Uranus, right down there. Okay. The next one then is Earth. So Earth is closer to the top. Okay, put a star next to that one. Jupiter is in the middle, and then Venus is just above Earth. Okay, so now I can see that Venus is my top star. This is my first star on my text. So Venus then is closest to
to the sun because it says here the planets are written in their order from the sun so mercury is the closest planet but that wasn't on our list so venus would have number one the next star then is earth so earth would have a number two okay so you go through them and put the, put the numbers in all of the boxes okay question two then says is venus hotter or colder than mars so if you go and have a look at both venus information and mars's information you will be able to find the answer number three says which planet do we live on now i think you already know the answer to that one but if you don't have a look and there's a clue somewhere it says something about human beings and that will give you the answer number four says the red planet is another name for which planet now have a good look through the text Find red planet because they are your key words and that will give you the answer to that one. Number five says, why is giant a good word to describe Jupiter? Now let's go and have a look at Jupiter's information. So Jupiter says, Jupiter is the biggest planet. It is a gas giant. So why is giant a good word? Think about what that first sentence says. The last one then says, what are Saturn's rings made of? So go to Saturn. It says Saturn has rings. And then it says they are made of, and then you read the rest. Okay? So that's everybody's reading work for today. Your word power work then. Oh, one second. Your next page in your word power book then is page 22. Okay, and it's called, What Did You Call Me? Okay, so it's this page. It's got a wizard at the top. It says, people call each other by lots of different names. Full names, first names, nicknames. When you write a story, you might need to make up names for your characters as well. There are so many you could choose. I think you're going to really enjoy this page today. It's not as challenging as our, some of our other word power work, so I think you will be fine. So the first section says, this is Hannah. Who might use these names for her? So then you've got Sweetie. So have a think. Who might call Hannah Sweetie? Who might call her Han? And who might call her Hannah? I'll give you a clue. Her friend might call her one of those. Her teacher might call her one of those. And her mum or dad might call her one of those. So they're your clues. The next one says, write down any different names you have here, including your full name. Okay, so you can write down your, your full name first. That's nice and easy. And then have a think. What do people call you sometimes? So do, does anyone shorten your name? So for example, if your name was Thomas, people might shorten it to Tom or people might shorten it to Tommy. Um, your friends might call you quite a funny name, maybe a funny nickname. Um, you just jot all those down on those lines. The next bit then says, why do you think people use different names for one another? So why do we use different names sometimes? So why do you think some people shorten Thomas to Tom? Maybe sometimes because it's quicker. Um, maybe because you know them quite well. You feel comfortable with them. Um, your mum might call you sweetheart. And that might be because she loves you. So just have a think of the reasons why people might call people different names. And then down the bottom, it says, what are some of your favourite names? They might be people you know or characters from books or films. So that one is completely up to you. That's to use what you know, so any, any you can use any of your favourite names for that bottom section, okay? So good luck with all of your literacy work for today. I've been really impressed with the work that I'm receiving on the email. So I look forward to seeing your work for today um, and I hope you all have a lovely weekend and I will see you on Monday.